Yesterday, Sheikh Yasser Qadi trashed all of Islamic finance. And he did this by putting out a tweet basically saying that there's no fundamental difference between conventional mortgages and halal mortgages. I personally thought that this was a slap in the face to everybody in the community of Islamic finance working to provide halal options to Muslims. So I'm gonna get into those tweets and my perspective on it. But guys, if you are returning to this channel and continue to watch my content, the only thing I ask of you is that you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, so you can come back for more videos. Let's get into the tweets and what Yasser Qadi actually said. He said, this is Sheikh Qardawi's fatwa among so many others as well. I'm fine with it. Amja basically says, only if you can't find Islamic one and you need it, then you may go to a conventional. I'm not that fussed. The Islamic one really isn't substantially different anyways. And then he goes on to say, I mean, I know others disagree, but listen to even Dr. Mann in my interview with him and in my interview with Dr. Akram Nadwi, he also held the exact same sentiment. So instead of working out conventional pseudo halal uh, hiyal, there are more expensive, just follow Sheikh Qardawi. So the first point I wanted to make about this was the fact that he's not making a distinction between the quote unquote pseudo halal option and the actual halal option. So there are a lot of halal mortgage companies and I've made a video about this previously that just take the word halal, slap a label on it and have the exact same process as the bank. And of course, anybody who is, who is doing that, you know, they are no different from the bank. It's not really halal, it's the exact same thing. But there are some people who are genuinely going about it the correct way, buying a house and then reselling it or buying it and renting it out for a period of time and then transferring ownership of that to the individual buying it. And so the big problem I have here is he's painting all halal financing with the exact same brush. And the reality is that this is a huge slap in the face to everyone who's working so hard to do it the right way for the Muslim community. Not to mention the fact that he's kind of brushing off the seriousness of interest. Now, I am not someone who is dismissive of al Qardawi's fatwa saying that you can own a house under, ne under circumstances of necessity and if there are no other halal alternatives available. And if there truly are no other legitimate halal alternatives available and you are in a situation of necessity, by all means go for it. But I have a huge problem with someone who is basically saying that every single type of Islamic financing arrangement that exists is all the same as the one that exists at the bank. A second point I wanted to make about this whole issue is the fact that as Muslims, over the last few years, doesn't it feel like we've started to actually gain the respect that we deserve in society? I certainly feel that way and I've noticed it on social media and different places, the Muslim society and the Muslim community is gaining a level of respect. And the reason we're doing this and the reason we are gaining this respect is because we have red lines. We have things that we will say no to. No matter what they are, we will not bow, we will not budge, we will not try to become like everybody else. And I think, you know, the world around us is seeing that, look, these Muslims aren't budging on these issues. They are staying firm to what they believe. And to me, a big problem is coming along and saying that, number one, all halal mortgages are just the same as the bank. And number two, that, you know, the type of interest we're talking about when it comes to banking loans and mortgages and different things like that is different than what the Quran is talking about. To me, this is a big mistake not only from a Islamic finance perspective, but just from an Islamic perspective altogether. If we are people who are not holding firm and you know constantly just moving the needle, moving the needle, moving the needle for what is permissible, what is allowable, what is acceptable, right? What's gonna end up happening is we're gonna erode everything that's special that makes us Muslim. And it's gonna be exactly like Christianity or any of these other faiths where you know people look at them and be like, okay, well, what the hell does it actually mean to be a Christian or mean to be Jewish if you just erode everything that actually exists and the, the red lines that our faith provides. The last point I will make on this issue is the idea that there is no fundamental difference and therefore we should just go with the conventional and what's available. And I think this is a pretty dangerous way of thinking because it makes us complacent. It makes us unwilling to strive for making things better for our community and the people around us. The fact of the matter is that interest and debt crushes the society that we live in. Let's be honest. People are being crushed by student debt. They're being crushed by personal debt. They're being crushed by credit cards. Sometimes it is in fact their own fault. And you know, 
I, I truly believe in personal accountability and personal responsibility. But the idea that, okay, we'll just go with the conventional if you can't find a halal alternative, or the halal is the exact same thing as the haram. I mean, come on. And I realize that's a bit of a stretch, and I'm not saying he's saying that about every single thing. But we look and see the harms that interest has in society. We see the, the harms of riba. And so to go ahead and say that, okay, you know, a conventional mortgage is the same as a halal mortgage, and maybe the halal mortgages aren't perfect, and certainly there are some fake ones out there. You are, I am convinced of that. But all the people who are trying to make an ecosystem out there better and more preferable to Muslims and ultimately preferable to humanity, this is a slap in the face to everything that they're working for. To just say to go for the conventional. Go for what's easy and what's familiar, right? Out of necessity? I mean, come on. You're a scholar, you should know better. You can't look around you and just see the harms that all of these types of predatory lending does to people. Like the world is trillions of dollars in debt. People are crushed by interest every single day. It keeps you enslaved to a job you hate, to a life that you don't like. Yeah, and mortgages are worse. Mortgages are the same. This is a 25, 30 year commitment to living in the same spot, the same location, you know, going to a job that you hate, or you better have a damn good backup plan. And what does this lead to, right? If we start to say that, uh, you know, a conventional mortgage is the same as a halal mortgage, what about your retirement plans, right? What about your RSPs? What about your TFSAs? For the people in the US, the 401ks, the, the Roth IRAs, is there no fundamental difference between how those get invested and the halal way of investing them? No, of course not. We wouldn't say that because we know that in these types of funds, we can invest in things like alcohol, gambling, tobacco, adult entertainment, weapons, drugs, making that type of account haram. But we can also invest in things like science and technology, healthcare, infrastructure, natural resources, things that build up and make a better society. How much more productive would our economies be? How much more money would we have to spend if we weren't burdened with interest? So those are the issues that I have with those tweets. Uh, and I just want to say, like, this is no hate against Yas al-Qadi. Absolutely not. I have the utmost respect for him in many areas. Like the Sira of the Prophet that he made, I listened to it. It was fantastic. Probably one of the best English Siras of the Prophet you could you could possibly ask for. It was great. Uh, and so like I'm not hating on him. I'm not hating on any scholar. I am not a scholar. I'm I'm not super knowledgeable when it comes to Islam. But what I am is I'm fairly well versed in finance. I run my company, Canadian Islamic Wealth. And I just hate to see our religion be eroded and turned into something and watered down and turned into something that, you know, loses all of its respect, right? There's a reason why people are starting to respect Islam, and that's because we stand firm to the things that we believe in. And, you know, we don't care that we won't be rich by retirement because, you know, we're going to be rich in the afterlife. You know, Allah is the one who provides for us, not the bank, not the government. It's Allah. Right. And so to say that, you know, oh, well, just go to the haram option because there's it's it's the same as the halal option. Come on. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Please make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And inshallah, you can come back uh, next time. Jazakallah khair. Assalamualaikum.